There was an idea. The idea was to bring together a group of remarkable people, see if they could become something more. I have an army. We have a Hulk. This is the Marvel Tribe, brought to you by Walt's Apartment Podcast and the Diz Insider. Avengers! Assemble. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Marvel Tribe. We are a group of excited and passionate individuals who have come together to share our love of all things Marvel. We are brought to you by Walt's Apartment Podcast and thedisinsider.com. I'm Sam, and I'm super honored to be joined by our amazing group of Marvel nerds tonight. We've got the Blurred Hulk and Di- the Blurred Hulk David, if I could talk, and Brianna with us tonight. How are you guys? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. All right. From the big screen to the small print, feel the pulse in your chest so you know you're alive. One team, one love. It's the Marvel Tribe. I love my creepy <laughs> opening. I do too. I do too. I can do this forever. Yeah. So we're talking Moon Knight episode two. Wow. Number two. I I'm really I love enjoying it. the show. I'm I'm liking it so. I was going to say, this but episode brought out tell the full disclosure to everyone. I've only seen it the one time. Yes. How dare you, David? Oh, yes. Wow, we're gonna, David. <laughs> we're going to talk about that as well. But am I is, Am I screen freezing? No. No, I'm good. You're good. Okay. I'm going to have internet <laughs> issues here, and it snowed today. So I'm really not happy about that part. <laughs> so I, I'm, I thought summer was coming here, but I, you know, we had a, a small power outage and all kinds of. So if I phase out or whatever, just forgive me. It is what it is. Mother Nature. It's Conchu. Blame Conchu. Always. So this series so far has been very different than the other Disney plus shows that we've consumed and other things that we've gotten from the MCU, because we're not getting your typical MCU Easter eggs. Like, you know, we would have in all of our other shows um, that we've consumed on Disney plus, but we're getting a lot of really great comic ones that David and I were talking about before. So we'll talk about those as we go through Mm -hmm. Um, overall impressions of the episode this week, Brianna. Um, Overall, I thought it was great. I thought it brought in a lot of the comedy that we're used to in the MCU. Um, This one was a lot of fun, and you got to meet new characters. So excited to see where all that goes. Yeah. David? Yeah, it it was awesome. It's, uh, you know, the the continuation uh, is, so far, it's presenting as disconnected-ish. But there's there's definitely some some really deep dive Easter eggs in there, and then there's a lot of reference to the comic book stuff. So I'm I'm here for the ride. I'm I'm enjoying it. It's it's a it's a breath of refreshing air in the air of I mean God, we have Marvel for almost two decades now that's been dominating the big screen and stuff, and so it's really hard to just throw out fresh content out there without it feeling kind of, you know, repurposed, repackaged. Re- so, th- and this is fresh. This is a brush of breath of fresh air and I'm enjoying it. So. Me too. All right. You guys ready to just hop on in? Let's, Let's do, it. do it. Let's do it. So we got left off with the Jackal scene and they are, well, Steven is in the bathroom. We, we know that Mark, um, was asking to take over and, you know, don the, the Moon Knight suit. Uh, that was our first peek at Mark and Moon Knight specifically. I uh, was at the end of episode one uh, to defeat the Jackal. Then we wake up in episode two. Yeah. <laughs> so we, so we hear the sound effects and there's like the cameras on like sand. So you're not sure if you're on the beach or are in Egypt or whatnot. And then it pans out and he's in his bed waking up from the, what he, you know, Steve's waking up from what he thought was a nightmare. He runs off his bed and, you know, he gets slammed to the ground by the chain. His, um, you know, his foot leg being chained to the bedpost there, which I have to say is a pretty damn strong bedpost. That dude's like two, a solid 200 pounds. So, <clears throat> 
I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, um, <laughs> those fed points or those fed chains become very interesting later on. <laughs> the look he gets uh, later on when he has company. Oh, of course. Who wouldn't give him that look? I mean, you walk into the men's apartment and you see chains, you're thinking a certain thing about that <laughs> individual. So, and it's not always bad. You know, well, I don't know. I can't. I, I I I did I did have this uh this contemplation in my head. Like, wow. If so, Steven's a single guy, and if if he brought a date to his apartment, in in his mannerism and everything else, would he, would they it, take those chains as like the dude from Fifty Shades of Grey, or the guy who's going to chop me up into a million pieces? Oh, I would feel like I would be the next like serial killer sub like subject. Okay. Coming from Steven. Yeah. I mean, maybe if Mark took me home, I would be more Christian Grey vibes. Yeah. <laughs> Mark's got a little more confidence in there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Steven, so like, yeah, would definitely be eating me for lunch. <laughs> and that would be, and that that's a fair assessment. I, I was like really contemplating that because I mean, Mark's not a bad looking guy. He's the same guy as as Mark. Uh, I mean, Steven and Mark are the same, but. They act totally different, and really, how you act and your lack of confidence can negatively impact you. I mean, I know some girls probably think that I can probably whip Steven's ass. So if I have to get out of this chain apartment and stuff, I can. But I just was thinking, like, I wonder if the girls think that's creepy. You see that that you know the chain to the bedpost thing. And thank you for answering that. Yes, I guess <laughs> we would eat you for lunch. It depends on the personality. Uh, I guess I don't know. Would it matter if it was if it was Bucky, like Bucky acting? Oh God, no! No. Oh Bucky, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It's 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 definitely the way that they carry themselves. And we're getting too far into this topic. (laughs) Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is not Marvel Tribe after Dark, sir. (laughs) I was just curious. I was just curious. So yeah, yeah. My answer is no for Steven. Yes for Mark. Got it. Same. So (laughs) we so. <laughs> throwing that out there. <laughs> so we uh so we you know show him like he gets up, goes to the mirror and tries to bring Mark back and he doesn't. He just kind of you know, you know, just ignores him. And then it cuts to the museum scene, I do recall. And he's walking in and they're closed it down for the day. They're taping it off the security guy, and it's like so he goes to like what's going on? It's like, oh man, there was you know some something horrible happened in the bathroom. The maintenance guy is flipping his lid and everything else. You know, some vandalism happening. And he's like, oh, did you review the security tapes yet? And he's like, no, well, I got I got something to show you, man. It's gonna blow your mind. So, you know, and he keeps calling him Scotty and stuff. So I, I so here here's here's my okay. Still Steven. <laughs> Still Steven, but what if so I know there there's another personality and stuff out there, but what if the other personality is Scotty and the security guard is not a jerk for not remembering his name? He's just like my name's Scotty. He'd been introduced to Scotty, and it was Scotty who asked the girl out on the date and stuff like that. I I just I don't know. That's I'm just putting a feather in there and just, you know, that Scotty might actually be the other personality. So, but anyway, <laughs> they're reviewing the tape. He cues it up and he's the f- most comic relief thing I've seen is they show uh, Stephen cowering behind one of the uh, one of the little stands where they have the Egyptian artifacts and he's crying. <laughs> he says, "Are you sitting there crying?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah." He, you know, he admits to it, and and you know, and then next thing you know, you see him running down the halls, and you know, this and there, throwing stuff, and he's like, "Oh, bloody hell! You're the you you're the one who messed up the loo. Is that what they call the bathroom? The, yeah, the loo. You're the one who messed up the loo. It's like, no, there's a jackal chasing me and stuff. Then that's where the the security guard referenced the hounds of Bakersfield." Which is a Sherlock Holmes book, I believe, about a phantom hound that was going around killing people and stuff. It turns out there's really a real serial killer. Spoiler alert if you haven't read it. I've never read it, but that was the synopsis I got from that. So, which I want to read it. Now that, that I'm like reading people's summaries of this, I want to read that Sherlock Holmes book. I really do. So, thanks for that. That, that kind of, you know. Anyway. Um, yeah, they don't really show the bathroom scene because obviously you can't film in the bathroom. 
that's a violation of their privacy. But they probably would have saw him transform into the Moon Knight if if they did have cameras in the bathroom. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where that part uh, left off, and then it goes to the HR the office, mm-hmm. if I'm not correct. Again, forgive me, I've seen it one time, so I'm trying to recall how the chain of events is happening. So he's in HR, um, talking to a guy. The guy is really kind of just, you know, basically he's about to get fired. Tell him, you know, you know, we're not, you're not alone, and you know, you seem troubled, and blah blah blah, and, and he gives him a pamphlet <laughs> yes. for some mental, some mental health. health. Yeah. Yes, they do good work here. Yeah, so, the, the you know, and, and he's like, and he and Stephen like seemed like he was receptive. He's like, oh, they look like they listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stephen so, was already and then, to go to therapy. You know, he knows immediately something's after up. that. He's like, yeah, um, you're you're fired basically. And do you have any? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you have you know? Do you have any of our, of our property and stuff? And you know, he he has he says I don't have anything. I didn't nick anything, which I I love their slang. You know the whole I got sacked or nicking stuff or the or just I don't know. I'm a fan of slang. So he's like, no, I didn't nick anything. Pulls out the uh, f- uh phone and the uh, key, random key that he found in his wall. And it's like, no, no, nothing. And so like, no, no, you saw something. Points to his name tag, takes it off side of his own, you know, sets it on the desk, and you can see he was. He was very just sad that he's about, you know, he loved that job. He was a gift shop, this, as he says, working in the gift shop. So he ends up going to the gold guy and starts talking to him. And I think he he actually, so the first time we saw him in the first episode, it seemed like it was kind of not really a conversation, like back and forth. But this time it seems like he's answering, like the golden guy obviously doesn't move move at all. But it seems he's like a there's a two way communication. Yeah. yeah. He's actually asking them questions and stuff. He's like, oh, that's a good idea. I should track down where all this stuff I found is and stuff. I'm like, okay. So please. I have a question Go ahead. about Crawley. Because he was listed as Crawley in this, right? Like yes, in the credits, yes, wasn't he? he? Was in the okay. credits. So Crawley is one of Mark's informants in mm-hmm. the comics. Do you think that Mark could have put Crawley in Steven's life to kind of feed him back intel on what's happening when Steven is the primary identity? Hmm. I like that. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it could be. That's an, I actually like that. That's not a bad theory. <laughs> So both Stephen and Mark have a relationship with uh, Crowley that's independent of one another, and yeah, actually, I uh, yeah, I can't wait to. There's so there's so much of that I in in some of these actors I want to see unfold and really see what's going on and stuff. I, I yeah, so I'm I'm here for that. I actually like that uh, theory that yeah he may have a relationship with both of them and he knows their you know their uh, you know he has DID so. And yeah. it's not hard to tell from the mannerisms, of, you know. And plus the fact that Mark doesn't have an accent. It's, you know, Stephen totally yeah. does. So that's another thing. So, you know, when Crowley f- hears Stephen, he's like, okay, this is Stephen. I'm supposed to listen, blah, blah, blah. But when, you know, Mark shows up to Crowley, maybe he's. Like, I'm supposed you know, to be the hey, informant, yeah. Yeah, this is this is what's going on. This is blah, blah, blah. This is, this is what you told me the other day, you know, you found your key. So, yeah, so it looks like that conver- they were having a uh, back and forth conversation, or at least he was answering his own questions and stuff. Like, if I should investigate, he's like, yeah, that was a good idea. I should go investigate. So, he ends up going through like five different, and we don't see this, but he goes through five different uh, storage lo- uh, locker places till he hits that last one. And the guy, the kid there, it's like, he, you know, he's giving the soft story, like, I've been through five of these. I don't know if, you know, if you have a storage locker that this kid, he's like, uh, which yeah, is dude, super I, sketchy I, like i would yeah. not have let even if i recognized him i would not have led him to the storage <laughs> locker if he's going i don't actually know the name it's by <laughs> so it totally reminds me of a kid and i think I, i'm not saying that they did this on purpose for casting wise but that's totally such a kid move like i don't really care i get paid <laughs> i i really true. like yeah i've seen you before i'll just show you and stuff <laughs> 
you know, where an older, more mature person would have some questions. Like, uh, you don't remember what's going? Like, okay, well, tell me more. Like, what's? Like, yeah, we would all have questions and stuff for for Stephen, but the kids, like, I don't really. Care. It's a job. I, I recognize your face. Yep, yeah. good enough for me. I never I'm forget a face. Yeah. Okay, let's go to let's go to storage unit forty three. <laughs> exactly. It's like. Uh, so and that's where we get another cool Easter egg and stuff is um so Moon Knight number 43 has a it's so Moon Knight number 43 references uh the internals as well as um uh Dane Whitman, who is the Black Knight, who's also from London and stuff where the, where they're currently at. So I'm not sure, you know, that that was an interesting comic book uh, Easter egg and stuff there. But there's also the a QR co- yeah. code. Yes. Right next to the number 43, which also, if you, it's the same exact QR code as from the first episode, but uh, Marvel updates updated their website. So now you get the second issue of the Werewolf by Night with uh, with Moon Knight introduction in there and stuff too. So yeah, there, so, so the I'm appearance. assuming we're, yeah, so we're going to see, I think we're going to see the third uh, more, appearance more in the third episode, yes. the fourth appearance in the fourth episode. It seems like that's the way they're lining it up for us. So I, I kind of like that. It's kind of it's kind of cool and stuff. And I like the fact so, that they're updating the website with the QR code because yes. it gives those you know weirdos like us, those Marvel nerds, something to geek out over. Because it takes you to a digital. So if you haven't checked out the QR code, it takes you to a digital copy of the comic book where Moon Knight is introduced in the first episode and his second mm-hmm. appearance in the second episode. So yes. that's how Marvel uh, is changing the QR code. Mm-hmm. It's pretty awesome, and it's pretty cool because my kid, my kid found it. You know, they 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 key into QR codes, and and now the fact that they update the website, they're going to start probably reading those uh, digital books because they're going to be gone. And then by Wednesday, I'm assuming when they release the third episode. So, and honestly, we talked about how that was going to be something that Marvel was going to have to figure out um, with hitting this next generation of audience. So. Like these characters that we're accustomed to and the MCU that we're accustomed to, if you haven't grown up on it, you kind of like you're you're kind of just like thrown into the mix and it's like pulling in these new age viewers and having this like digital media that they can consume in addition to it and giving them that background knowledge and giving them things that they can work off of, I think is a really smart play for the MCU. Oh yeah. Sorry, I just so, up. I no, I, I <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally agree. So inside, um, so we're inside the storage locker, and he he sees like a cot and some bug out gear and totes and everything else. And it's obviously that somebody's been staying here. And he opens up, you know, this uh, gym bag and freaks out because he sees a gun, um, which was kind of weird. I mean, I, I guess I mean Steve's never seen a gun before. He's not really, but. I don't know. From the adventure he just had, he, he shouldn't be freaking out the way he has been freaking out. He, but he, um, he pulls it out. Uh, <laughs> well, that's right. He did. He did. He did throw it at the car um, when they was shit. Yeah, I forgot about that. So yeah, okay. This totally. This totally tracks with how Steve is with uh, weapons. But um, so he pulls out all this different money. So then you know, there's Chinese money and uh, U.S. currency and and everything else. Then he sees a passport. Now. I at first I thought this was a fake passport, but it would make sense. This is totally be Mark's passport. I mean, and it you know if Steve was the real person, it would have Steve's mm-hmm. name on it and stuff. Um, but it's Mark Spector, and I think that was more for the audience than it was for Stephen to for Stephen's reveal. It was tell the audience that Mark is actually the primary personality here. He has a passport. He has a date where it was issued. Uh, his birthday that's on the passport is coincides with uh, the actor. Um, God, why am I Oscar Isaacs? Oscar Isaacs, yeah, and uh, uh, birthplace too is yeah. where Moon Knight is originally from in in the comics of Chicago. So that's where it said Mark was from. So yeah, so um, yeah, this is so uh, I I have every indication to believe that this is actually a legit passport. Uh, for Mr. Mercenary, and this is his bug out hideout that he was keeping from Steven. So when he needed to store stuff or hide stuff or do any of this stuff, it would make sense to hide it from Steven so Steven doesn't ask questions. 
Anybody else get any you vibes from the story? Especially since there's a cot in there. Yeah. There's a cot (laughs) and like a bug out kit. Like, it's like, oh, you just need a little glass cubicle in here. (laughs) So, yeah. So I thought that, I thought that was cool. And then here comes Mark in the, I love how glossy the walls are so you can see their reflections and stuff. their reflections throughout the whole show and stuff just on both episodes but i love how this room is just kind of you see their reflections and then here comes mark and stuff telling them okay like, hey, man yeah here's what i'm gonna need you to do i'm gonna need you to put everything back you know uh, and he's like no dude you need to tell me who you are who are you and so he tells him like look okay so i'm the avatar for Oh, I dropped David there. So he for tells Con- him he's the uh, Kanshu. Yeah, the avatar for Kanshu. Mm-hmm. You good, David? <laughs> <laughs> so he tells him that he's the avatar for Kanshu. He explains how he does, like, Kanshu's. <laughs> I just wish you guys could see David's face right now. Yeah. What? What is it doing? Take a screen. No, don't take a screenshot. Am I? Am I, I so talking? Wish I would have. I would. I should have. You had a am snake face. <laughs> what? All right. I need some feedback. Am I? Am I talking or am I? So I can frozen? hear you now. Okay. All right. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> Are you back? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can Hello? hear us. Yes, I can. Oh my god, I don't know what's going on. Uh, power outage, remnants, my internet's reset. I don't know. So, but we'll forgive you carry this on. time. We're, we'll yes. carry on. So, you were explaining how um, Mark was telling Stephen that he was the avatar for Khonshu. Do you want to explain yeah, yeah, what yeah. an avatar is? So Avatar is pretty much a vessel that these apparent gods use on, you know, to operate in our earth realm and stuff. So they have different, you know, abilities to, for some reason, they're not allowed to be in this realm. And I'm sure they're going to explain why that's the case. Um, A a close. I'm. Am I still? So there. Can you hear me? We can right. hear you now. No. Oh, you can. Now we can. Now we can. All right. I'll talk super. I'll talk super fast. All right. So, All right. Avatar, earthly uh, bodies being possessed to use. As the gods behest, uh, be- okay. So, an avatar is when the gods choose a person, a physical person to basically do their work in this realm because they cannot currently access this realm. I believe David was trying to say that they are hopefully going to explain to us why the gods are not able to access this realm. Um, I'm back. You are, but like, I don't know if you're going to stay here. So we did see <laughs> that, um, we'll, we'll get to this part, but we did see how Khonshu actually can't impact much in this realm without right. Mark. So we will get to that when we get to the, the Arthur part. But um, so he explains all of this stuff about how he is, you know, conscious avatar. Steven's freaking out. He grabs the stuff. He finds the scarab. Yes. Which the skip, I always forget her name. Layla. No, no. Um, Am- Am- Amit. 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 Yes, Amit. Amit. So thus it will lead the way to Amit. Um, and he's like, I'm getting out of here. I'm going to the police. They're going to 
like find you or they're going to, they're going to get me help. They can give me all the medication they want. Like, this is crazy. Basically like I'm turning myself in. I don't want to do this. I don't want to let you have control. Freaking out entirely. So as he is uh, running out of his storage locker, that's when we see his next interaction with Khonshu, which that scene was incredible. Oh, it was, it was yes. so eerie. That scene was shot intense. very well. It was, it was, it was a very well produced um, scene. And you, the way that the lights are changing and everything is just happening in that scene added so much drama. I was afraid of Khonshu. I was like backing away from the screen. So, <laughs> But it helps, like, later on in the episode, learning, like, gosh, you can't do anything in this realm other than scare you without Mark. Mm -hmm. So um, he's running. He's trying to get away from Kanshu. He's being chased. Um, and that is when he bumps into Layla. Right? Bump is a kind word. <laughs> almost gets ran over. But... Almost gets oh, ran yeah, over she, by yeah, Layla. She almost ran them over. Yep. And then, you know... She gets on, he gets on the back of her moped or whatever it is. And um, we find out that Layla is his, is Mark's wife. And yes. Steven is like, just get me to my flat and we'll figure this out. Like, I have a wife. What? No, your Mark has a wife. Um, so they get back to uh, Steven's flat. And that's when it gets quite a bit more interesting there was something that really happened in that scene that showed me a lot about mark's character as um as an identity and mark actually resembles a lot of the things or i mean steven actually resembles a lot of the things that mark isn't willing to um accept about himself or he's like not willing to express. So like saying his favorite poet and reciting the poem, which happens to be the same one as Layla's mm -hmm. and talking to his mom, those things that Mark wouldn't do, mm -hmm. Stephen is embodying them. And I think that's actually really beautiful to show that like he's taking on these things that um, Mark wouldn't necessarily. And that's obviously why he's got issues, but. <laughs> so can I, can I say that I, if I, before I can break up and stuff. So, Everything that Steven embodies is the stuff that uh, Layla likes. It's absolutely everything, like studying the hieroglyphs and the Egyptian language, the poetry. He memorized her favorite poem. His veganism, saying, his gentle yes. nature. Yeah, everything. Talking to his mom again. You know, he's like, you're back. You're, she's like, Yo, you're back talking to your mom. Like all the stuff that, like you said, Mark couldn't give her. He created this persona based on what his wife really liked and stuff. So I thought that was kind of cool. Steven is really the perfect guy for, Le for Layla. It made me and he all even sappy. admitted it. He's it like, I would, I would never divorce you. What? <laughs> he just met her for like five minutes and stuff. And so I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, I thought that was a beautiful um, touch to it. Um, so they're talking he's starting to piece things together and I think she's realizing that maybe something is going on with him too. She's starting to see that. Okay. Maybe, maybe you've got something going on here and you're not Mark uh, right now. And that is when she opens up the duffel bag and finds the scarab, which they had been digging for together. So, and she says, do you know why we were looking for this? Do you know why we were searching for this? Do we know why? And he, yeah, he, he admitted no, but I'm, I'm not going to skate past the fact that she just manhandled him in that bag because he, he was like, he was so, so um, anxious to show her everything. And then Mark was like, dude, you show her you're going to get her killed. You you're can't show her. Killed. And then he tries to be all coy and like, no, never mind. Never mind. And she just manhandles his ass. <laughs> get out of the way it was very Dora Milaje it, it was kind of cool. just like it was it was, it was a yeah. half a second it was a half a second but I paid attention I was like ooh <laughs> that feels emasculating right there <laughs> so yeah but you're right yeah so she finds a scare up and is like yeah do, you don't you really don't remember me you don't remember why we were searching for this our adventures any of our life and he's like no honestly no I don't I don't know anything and he could see that she is visibly upset about him having the scarab 
because it was something that they had obviously had a mission about Mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I don't care. You can take it. You can have it. And, and then that's when Mark is in the mirror telling him like, no, like you're Mm -hmm. going to get her killed. They're never going to stop until they have it. And Mm -hmm. saying all this stuff. Um, And then there's a knock on the door. (laughs) Yes, Easter egg number four or something. Um, so we we get um, God uh, f- uh, knock on the door. It's the police, uh, the the DC police, uh, Frederick and Kennedy, which is John F. Kennedy's middle and surname. But of course, they're in London, so you know why would Stephen know that and stuff? But I thought that was kind of a a very weirdly placed Easter egg and stuff. But um, yeah, they knocked on the door, and, and Stephen was assuming that they're there because you know he vandalized the toilet. You know, she even asked like, "Why are they?" He's like, "Yeah, I kind of, you know, I vandalized the toilet and stuff." And so she goes and hides, and he cracks the door open, and you know, uh, Kennedy, the guy, just lets himself in. He's like, "Oh yeah, thanks, okay." And they're kind of, you know, talking to him and searching the apartment and stuff, kind of poking around. And then we get the creepy, you know, the 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 female. She walks over to the bed, <laughs> picks up the uh, the the chain, the, the chain restraints, and restraints, yeah. and looks at him in the most judgmental way I've ever. I I, I had secondhand embarrassment for him. Like <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not what you think. He's not a creep, but he, yeah, kind of creepy. It, it kind of is creepy. But the second that I saw them, I was like, they ain't, they ain't the fuzz. They ain't the yeah. police. Like, something's weird here. What's going on? Yeah, no, and, why would HR call the cops on them anyway? They just want them fired. And, you know, so I didn't think, I help, agree with yeah. you. I didn't think they they called the cops. So. Um, and that's when we realized that they're there looking for something in particular. Mm-hmm. And it is the scarab. Yep. Yep. Who wants yeah. the scarab? Oh yeah, Harlow. Arthur Harlow. Harlow wants the scarab. So he gets in the car with or they take him. Um thankfully Layla had taken the scarab and hopped out the snuck, window. Yeah. yeah, hopped out the window was like tucked behind a chimney thing on the roof. Um so they're like he's like, it's gone, I don't have it. So they're like, Well, you're you know who has it, so let's go. Put him in the car, start saying, you know, he has these crimes against him for um, as Mark Spector because of his passport and mm-hmm. talking about how he killed a bunch of archaeologists and stuff. I think that that was probably footage from when he was um, chosen as the avatar during the attack when he was chosen as the avatar by Khonshu and Khonshu like resurrected him. So I personally don't think that Mark did that. I think. What do you think, David? I think he was there. I don't even think he had, this was at the point that Kanchu was around. I think this was prior to, I think this is the Bushman. Um, so in the comic books, you know, this is kind of what sets everything off. The Bushman decides to betray everyone and kills the archaeologist, beats right, Mark yeah. to death. I think that's what that scene is and stuff. Yep. And Mark was left for dead. And, they and that's when Kanchu. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So. Um, and he was basically there trying to save his his girlfriend at the time, who um, is who we have as Layla now. So he was there trying to save her. Um, and that is that's pretty much where, where we're at is like they're telling him, no, like you did this. So now he's like, I've got all this blood on my hands. But I, I agree with you, David, that that is that incident right before he got. Um, before Kanchu came into the. Before, before Kanchu came in. Yep. Um, but but so, it's so that distrust that Steve has for Mark, like that right there, that kind of sealed it. It's like, I can't trust this. This dude's a murderer. Like yep. Steve believed what they said. Like he killed all these people, especially on the hobby that he loves. He loves Egyptology and kills archaeology. Who does that? So I can't yep. trust this dude. So, um, so they take him to a, a neighborhood. <sighs> Yeah, they take him to a neighborhood, um, and he's like, you know, uh, this isn't the police station and stuff. And then, you know, the you know Kennedy guy lives in the rearview mirror, and you see his little uh, cultist tattoo. Uh, so he's a part of the heart. He's like, oh crap, you know. It's like, come he on, you should have figured out. Justice, yeah. You should have saw that, man. Before you allow them to put you in the car, but. But yeah, so they get out. I was like, "Hey, sit tight," you know. And then he's like trying to bang on the window and stuff. And there's a little girl 
<laughs> playing soccer. Uh, she gets the ball and she has the tattoo too, which I don't know if she was 18. So I don't know what's the rules for getting tattoos in, in London because she looked a little young to have that kind of tattoo on her. Do your parents give her permission to do that? But um, sorry. That's dad the dad and you talking. That's yep. the dad and you talking. Dad well, she, she looked like an adolescent. I was like, you shouldn't be having a tattoo. What, how old are you? Go back. Listen, to if you can speak Mandarin, you can have a tattoo. <laughs> If you're in a cult, you can have a tattoo. I guess, yeah, yes. if you're in a cult, if it, if you're drinking the Kool-Aid. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, cult has different rules. And so, um, so then you know, here comes Mark again in the review mirror. It's like, dude, uh, I can get you out of the situation. You really need to just. Oh no, actually, Mark tries to take the body because he does that little. You hear that little phase kind of thing, and it doesn't work. And so he's like, dude, give me the body. I can help you us get out of here. Turn me over. It's like, I'm never, you know, trusting you again or listening to you again. And then and we hear that Harlow was listening over the radio to kind of piece together what he thought was the case that this dude has a multiple personalities. And that's when Harlow's like, yep, yep. Yeah, that's all right. We under- I hear you loud and clear. And, and that's why the there's chaos inside of him. Yep. That's why the scales of justice couldn't read him the first time because there's chaos inside of him. Oh yeah. So he lets them out. They uncuff him. He's, you know, it's like, Hey, before you change or anything, just hear me out. And just, and then you hear, um, uh, Conchu show up in the background. It's like, don't listen to anything. He says, you know, kill him, you know, hit him in the wind, in the wind pipes. It was very specific. I think he went it. Uh, Harlow to stop talking for some reason. Go ahead. Just for a quick second before we move further, um, back to the case file when they yeah. showed the archaeologist picture. So the case file number was 1975, which is the first time that um, Moon Knight was introduced in Marvel Comics. So Correct. I thought that was a an interesting tip. Another there. Easter egg. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Let's move on. <laughs> so uh so Conchu is like sitting there trying to egg Steven on like to kill Harlow and stuff and he's like oh what's he saying you know like to kill me uh, yeah well I used to be his avatar too and stuff and and you know which I think that's a lie but I don't I don't have any you know evidence to support that so you know we have to trust Kurt Harlow maybe he was his you know I was the fist of vengeance and stuff and then he's like the problem with with um Kanchu was he always act acted too late after the you know the crime or the deed was committed and stuff. And so I got tired of being the fist of vengeance and stuff. And Ahmet, you know, who you know showed me the light, you know, who uh pulls up, you know, and you know, they're walking through the soup hall and stuff, and it's like he you know, Ahmet pulls up evil by the roots and stuff, and you know, before it could lay its seed and ruins I use plant metaphors. I'm I'm not a green thumb, so I wasn't really following along too too much and stuff. I think he said something about a tomato and Hungarian funny something. I, I don't I don't know. Sorry, bad joke. <laughs> Spoke to the vegan and Steven. Yeah, so he asked him if he was a vegan. Like he's like, "Hey, I made this lentil soup this morning. You're you're gonna love it. You know, I got the recipe from that dude up there on the rafters. He's just who who sits on the rafters, just twiddling their thumbs like that. But all right, yeah. So he was sitting there. Was like, yeah, yeah. That dude's from. Did he say hungry? Is that where he says he's from? I don't so remember. Yeah, he says he's pretty funny. He's from the Yucatan. From the Yucatan, yeah, he's a pretty funny guy. So, I couldn't find any reference in the comic books, anything, or to to that guy or anything. But I only watched episode one. So, I, if I do see anything next episode, I will report back. But I couldn't find any Easter egg or shout out. But you know, he was referenced for. I think he was referenced for a reason. But uh, I don't know. So. Well, I I know there's a lot of ruins in the Yucatan. Mm-hmm. It's and like there, that. The, well, there is some Spanish and Mexican uh, superheroes too that's from the area. So, but I just couldn't find any connections and stuff. So, you know, we'll work on it. We will. I promise. We'll crack the this story is it. developing. <laughs> so they're eating their soup. Um, and that's where, you know, he talked about, um, yeah, you should definitely trust an Amit. You know, Amit's a cool girl. 
She, you know, she defeats evil before it starts. You know, basically the whole I would strangle Hitler as a baby, you know, that, you know, that you saw War Machine give that little speech like, hey, why don't we just go back and just kill Hitler baby or baby Thanos and stuff. So <laughs> Ahmet was prepared to do that. That's and then when he's it like, becomes an issue for Steven, though. Yeah, absolutely. A real issue. He's like, so wait, these people don't commit crimes yet. And, you know, I, I've had thoughts of killing my boss which I love uh, every night. And I never acted on that. I don't think I ever would act on that and stuff. So you're, you're judging baby, maybe two that may commit a crime 30 years from now. Like you guys are okay with being kitty murderers. And, and, uh, you know, and then Harlow called, you know, basically it's like a, a, a poisonous limb or something like that. A, a, a infected limb. You're just cutting off the limb and basically just saying killing kids is no big deal. So it's like, you know, you're cutting off a finger. Don't worry about it. So he's like, here's the deal. Just give me the scare up, basically, and I won't kill you. <laughs> so uh, as he's like, I don't know where it is. And Mark is like, dude, do not give up Layla's name. Do not do not say anything. Don't do anything. And he's like, hey, let me show you something. So you see this uh, cane here? Yeah, this was uh, Amit's given to Amit's first avatar. And it has a sliver of her power. And it starts turning this no, not chaos, but turning this uh, dark magic purple, uh, which we've seen before throughout the uh, MCU here, including when you know um, Doctor Strange was trying to hold together the multiverse and the Spider Man, everything was turning purple. We saw it with Agatha, Agatha. with her dark, <laughs> dark purple magic. Purple is not a good color for magic and stuff. It's all about evil stuff. So, uh, so the thing was turning purple and everything that Gator's eyes was lighting up and stuff and. Everybody's backing away. Yes, everyone needs to, to step back. That was, you know, that daddy cult leader was not happy. When when purple comes, you better run. So Layla shows up, like, hey, I got the scare up here and stuff. And then, um, you know, uh, she runs over to Mark and is like, hey, turn into the cape man, you know, and protect this, you know. And he's like, I don't, you know, whip out the suit, whip out the suit, kept kept referencing the suit and stuff. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And so uh, Harlow jabs the uh, cane into the ground and a big old purple portal opens up and we see a jackal's hand comes crawling out of that to chase them down to kill them, basically. So they run, they get trapped in some side, some evil magician's lair, as, as Steven says. And you see the jackals on outside the door beating the door down, trying to get in and stuff. And she's pleading and begging Stephen to change into the cape one, the suit, put on the suit. Do you know you have to? And he has this panic and he tells her, like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, I that's not me. I swear. So she finally like breaks down and believes him. And she's like, Okay, then there's gotta be another way for us to get out of here. And before I know it, the door, you know, she's trying to climb like some some stuff. And then the door breaks open. She doesn't see anything. He's like, oh, shit. It's the ja- oh, can I, can I can say shit. Um, yeah, oh, so, yeah. Oh, shit. It's the jackal and stuff. Uh, so the jackal starts slowly approaching Steven. And she's like, what jackal? What? And then next, you know, it tackles Steven out the window. And you hear Conchu's voice like, change you idiot change now change and then next put on the suit put on the suit (laughs) and he smacks his head on this uh pylon and he does a superhero landing and and turns into mr knight mr knight three-piece suit (laughs) and his ski and the ski mask and it was looking fresh to death oh yeah Yeah. dude was deaded up that dude yeah he he He's had like, the I drip. think I look pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he was he had the drip drip on. He was looking looking sharp. And he's so he sees this reflection and it's Mark Jostle dressed up as Mr. Knight. He's like, What the hell is this? He's like this is a suit? Like, what did you expect? It's like this ain't the suit that we I use. <laughs> like, where where did this come from? So next thing you know, then in comes the jackal j- pouncing on top of them, and then they're they're fighting again. Nobody sees the jackal. Um, you know, people on the bus, which is where we get another Easter egg. Because on the billboard on the bus, we see a, a advertisement for the GRC, which is the Global Repatriation Co- uh, Coalition, which we saw in Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. 
um, the art Captain America and the Under Winter Soldier, uh, where they after the snap and people kind of came back, you know. You know, people, they found people living in their own houses, moving on. Everything was kind of disconnected. So the the GRC came together to kind of help bring people back together. So it kind of helps with the timeline of events of when this was happening. So we saw that billboard. So that was another Easter egg in there. And he's just getting his butt handed to him by, you know, uh, by this invisible jackal. Uh, Layla tried to help. You know, she she took a bottle and threw it at and um, busted over the jackal's face. You saw, you know, she saw a little bit of the, you know, liquid like coming off the jackal, and then she gets uh, slapped <laughs> uh, by the jackal, and they're just, I mean, jackals just just serving them both up uh, some mech whoppers and stuff there, just left and right. Um, he gets thrown into the into the street. People are hilariously commenting. Um, you know, that uh, he's some drunk, really well dressed guy and stuff, and that's where you know, you hear Mark is like, dude, give me, let me take over, let me take over. And he's like, no, 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 I got this, I got this. And he's like, maybe I can do this. And so, you know, he's like squaring off, and he utters the most hilarious <laughs> telling lines ever and stuff. Um, he, he utters a very famous uh, quote from a very famous boxer, Muhammad Ali. Uh, he's like, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. My name is Steven with a V. And he's co the jackal. Um, and he's proud of himself. Dude's like, yes. He says some uh, some uh, London slang, which I, I didn't pick up. It's like what, Wagon or White Gang or something like that. I heard it was slang. I yeah, I don't I don't again I have to see it more than once to pick that up. But he said that and he's proud of himself, patting himself on the back and stuff, doing the little rocky pose and everything. And then the jackal comes and hems him up against the <laughs> against the bus. And that's where Mark is like, dude, you can't beat him. You're like, you let me let me do this. I need to save us. So that's where he's like, all right. I, I'll agree. Uh, I'll agree temporarily. You can save us. And then that's where the cool he changed from Mr. Knight into Moon Knight. His, you know, you see the kind of the bands, you know, the mummy bands wrap around them and everything. The transformation is dope. I love the CGI budget for the show. That was my favorite. Yeah. That transformation <laughs> right there was amazing. And he, when he turned, he's like, ah, oh, yeah, I mean, I mean, business and stuff. And so Layla's like, get him away from all of us and stuff. And so he takes off running. The jackal gives chase and we get the running through the, under the moonlight in the cityscape and stuff. He's hopping, he's climbing up buildings and stuff. R- love this scene, this entire scene running the jackals chasing them. He's m- jumping from one uh, big tall building to the next tall building and stuff. And then uh, comes towards like this church area where uh, he's like waiting, kind of timing his coordination with the jackal, and as it gets closer, he slides down. It's like, "Got you!" Jumps and grabs the jackal, and then body slams him WWE style onto the sphere, like those those little pointy little things and stuff, and just impels the jackal. On and top that of it. is why we now have age maturity ratings on <laughs> Disney Plus. Oh, because, it was brutal oh. because we thought that that decap. Fetation yeah. in uh Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Was that Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um was graphic for Disney Plus. No, no. This was amazing. Mm. Oh, I yeah. was super excited. Yeah. That sounds the incredibly that sinister been... to say, but <laughs> no, I, I agree. I agree hundred percent. Like that uh the, the decapitation, we didn't see, we just saw the the bloody shield. We saw the impalement here. He full on like Boom! John Cena like impaled him on there, fell to the ground, rolled and stood up, and it's like yeah. And you see him just hanging there, like back broken, impaled on top of this. I'm like, wow. Only thing that could have made it even, I mean, more graphic was if there was blood spewing everywhere and stuff. So yeah, it was it was a cool scene. I loved it. My favorite scene by far. So, so to play to the timeline a little bit. Um, and more of the timeline with the comics. Yes. Um, We are seeing Khonshu a lot more present in Mark's conscious and Mm -hmm. uh, Stephen's conscious. 
And in the comics, that doesn't really happen until like later, much later on in the comics. So the fact that we're already seeing these identities, it kind of like places us a little bit further along in the comics. Um, because Khonshu was not very prevalent in the beginning of the comics. And he came in like the last, I don't know, decade or so and started telling uh, Mark to do things to Arthur uh, Harlow, like just these aggressive acts towards Arthur, Arthur Harlow, which is what we're seeing him do now. He wants, you know, Harlow taken care of. So it does play to that. Um, I also, I don't remember what I was going to say. I'm having a Sam moment. No, you're good. <laughs> so we, um, so yeah, so after, so um, after the impalement, the jackal disappears and we get um uh Conchu comes back and he's like uh you know where's the you know no actually Conchu he's he's like you know um we had a deal this isn't gonna work you know I you know you're my avatar not Steven and stuff he's like I know I know well, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, I got to get the scare up. He's like, Harlow already has it and stuff. He's like, well, I have to find out where he's going. It's like, where do you think he's going and stuff? Like, all, like, he's being very condescending to Mark and stuff. And it's like, maybe, you know, maybe we don't, I don't want to abide by my deal or stuff like that. Like, he's really kind of just laying into Mark, reminding him of the fact that I save you. You're my avatar. I'm the one who's in charge. You're doing my missions and stuff. Um, and so he's like, I promise you, he won't be a, you know, Steven won't be a problem. You know, I, I can complete the mission and stuff. Uh, you know, after this, you know, this is it, right? This is my last mission. We're done. And he's like, well, you know, you don't want to know who's going to be my next avatar. You, you already know that, you know, and he's like, leave her out of this. That's, you know, you know, blah, 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 nothing to do, which kind of makes us understand why he left Layla, his wife, because country was, you know, had designs on his wife, like. Who, I mean, what a, what a, you know, thing to have some, you know, God do saying, Hey, I'm about to enter your wife. So he's like, I'm out. <laughs> he, he left her. It's like, Nope, you're not. You're coming with me, dude. So that, that sounded horrible. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, so uh, he's like, We'll find That should be the title of with. this episode. You're going to have some God enter your wife. <laughs> <laughs> so you, so you leave your wife uh, stranded. Um, so yeah, so he's like, Yeah, you know where you know where he's going, where do you think? And then uh next thing we oh oh no 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 and then Steve and, and Mark are having a conversation. Steve's like sad behind this uh reflection in this little statue thing and and he's like, So this is what it feels like, and you know, I, I you know, I you know, I, I'm kind of feels lost and like powerless and stuff it's like yeah that's you know it it usually takes a lot of willpower just to muster up to be in the reflection and stuff and he's like normally there's always been a wall separation and stuff but it sounds it seems like whatever you know whatever who's ever in control has a lot more power now because of conscious so uh, or has a lot more control so with that said you know uh, Steve is like Steven's trying to plead with Mark to give him back his body and everything else. And Mark won't listen. And Mark gets pissed off to the point where he's uh, smashing the reflection uh, into in the statue and stuff, shattering it into a bunch of pieces and stuff, leaving basically uh, Stephen stuck. And then next thing we know, we end up in, we see a reflection in the mirror in some hotel room. And it looks like it's, so here's my thing. It looks like it's Steven. He's wrapped up in the in the blanket, sitting on the edge of the bed, has bloody knuckles, and then it pans out from the mirror, and there's Mark sitting on the floor with a bottle of like tequila, looking out the window, kind of as we see Egypt. We're in Cairo, um, looking like so. a whole snack too. Just <laughs> just gonna throw that out there. So I think because we don't really have. In the indication, like both of so the guy Stephen in the mirror, let's just say that both both of his knuckles are bloodied up and stuff. Now, last I checked, the reflection can't punch through glass or do any of that stuff. The physical body can. So I don't think, in my opinion, don't think that is actually uh Stephen in the mirror. I think that's Mark. 
And I think the bottle drinking dude is the third personality. That's not that's not Mark. That's Scotty. Yeah, that, I mean, that's, the, that's, the, that's the Scotty guy or Scotty the, the other personality. No. So. Um, so I do remember what I was going to say about Khonshu. So um, Arthur Harlow says he can't do anything here without Mark So or without you. Like he can stir up the wind oh. and stuff like that. And so that is going back to that whole thing you were saying, uh, David, about how they can't exist in this realm. Yep. The gods can't exist in this realm. So they can't actually do their bidding here. They need to choose an avatar to do it because they can energetically exist, but they can't actually physically do anything. Correct. That's yeah, why we can hard. see Kanshu, but he can't do anything. Correct. And I think they're going to explain that. I hope they do. I hope they explain because it's actually going to give a lot of credence to why like Bass exists and has to exist through an avatar. Uh, why we got the Eternals who was here protecting the earth as it was growing one of the celestials and stuff, how, you know, the other God-like figures like the Asgardians were allowed to come to Earth, but these gods are kind of not. So I hope they explain that. Uh, I, I really do. I think I think it would expand more on what we're going to see in future upcoming MCU films and stuff. So, so that's kind of how it, it, and then, it, you know, after we get the little uh, scenery shot of uh, Cairo, Egypt there, uh, it, it, it closes off with a picture of Mr. Knight instead of Moon Knight this time. So it's the personality avatar of Mr. Knight. And uh, there is a song by these Egyptian. I was trying to f- remember the name again, saw the episode once. Can't remember the name of the band, but it's a famous Egyptian band that played them out. Uh, as they rolled onto the credits and stuff, so that was that was episode two. I think I didn't miss anything. I think we got everything. I think, I think we think, got it. I think we. I think we did. Did you guys notice any other like Easter eggs or interesting no. tidbits or? No, it was just a really good episode. I'm really excited for for what's going to come. The yeah. the CGI budget, like you were talking about, is like, whoa, <laughs> for it. a Disney Plus show. Woof. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean the hor- the horror scene in the in the uh, lockers oh. in, that, in that storage area was amazing. Like I really felt like I'm watching a scary movie. I was like, I was scared sitting yeah. like I'm sitting here watching it at my desk because um, I have to watch at my desk like like face here like staring at it. And I just like that's I had the first time I watched it, it has to be. Um, and I'm backing away myself. I'm like, oh, this is a little too close for comfort. They they had. They had some uh, some good some good graphics going on there. <laughs> okay. right. Do we have anything else that we want to say? Any speculations on what we're going to see in episode three? Um, I do think that we will get the third QR code for the third appearance. Yeah, I th- and I'll, we'll see that. Um, I and I I think that we might get some of the. Um, some of the uh what's dog dog bush and i think we might see some of the dog bush um incident and playing bushman. back into that bushman that's what it is dog bush bushman whatever dog bush whatever <laughs> yes, the bushman. The i know no the bushman uh incident where um you know he's trying to protect mm-hmm. layla and kind of the start of this whole the start of it, yes. in yeah. relationship yeah. with the mark yeah, yeah i, 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 I might see that in episode three well, okay. I think I think episode four. I here's my thing. I think episode three, we're gonna get a flashback of Mark's perspective to find the scare up in the first place. So um I, I don't know about you guys. So after we recorded the first uh our our first uh podcast about episode one, I went back and and I, I know you know, I, I told you guys I noticed how like uh when he woke up in the on the grass and jaw broken and he magically started healing because he was brought back to life, which I 100 percent believe Conchu brought Mark back to life because he needs mm-hmm. to use him as an avatar. What I didn't notice until I watched it again was there's there's actual glass sprinkled around him laying on the ground. Very small fragments, but they're there. So, so yep, yep. Uh, definitely conclusion solidified. Window. He definitely <laughs> came out of that window. That, that that's how. And that and um, Kanchu does tell him, you know, I you know I won't let anything happen to you. you know I I can't yep. let you die. He says that yep. to him, like yeah, he can. so absolutely. 
He says, so, and then and then Layla says that, well, if you have the suit, nothing can happen to you. But if you're walking around in your, you know, your human form, I didn't know if something could happen to you. Yep. So just so, it's you all coming Le- together. <laughs> you think Lay- Layla's in Egypt too? Or he left her again? I think she's, yeah, I, I don't think she's in Egypt. I think she'll make her way to Egypt. I agree. <laughs> Man, I, I, I don't think they're flying the same, the same I don't plane know. together. Wait a sec, wait a sec. That bed though looked like two people had been in it. <laughs> I I'm just saying I don't think they're flying together. I'm I'm definitely thinking she's traveling behind him. It they're they haven't really solidified the togetherness part yet. So so yeah, and again, like I said, I think we're gonna see the emergence of a third personality in episode three. So. I'm just gonna right. put that out there. And that's all that's all I really, we're gonna I'm call enjoying, him I'm enjoying yeah. we're gonna call him Scotty so we know better. Yeah, place yeah. marker, Scotty. Scotty. Okay. So but, you heard it yeah. here on the Marvel tribe. You did, you did. Oh, oh, uh, another Easter egg that I didn't find, but someone else found, and I didn't get a chance to rewatch it to verify it. But they said that in uh when uh Layla was looking through all of his uh, uh Steven's books and stuff, there was a book about Asgardians. And there's a book about the Wakandans, which yeah. both tracks because they both are about gods and especially Egyptian gods when it comes to Wakanda and stuff. So I was like, oh, cool. There's another Easter egg about Wakanda and stuff in there, too. And the Asgardians. So, but uh, um, I love the Wakanda Easter eggs. You know, those are making me excited because we know what's coming. We're going to get Namor. Cause, yeah, because yeah, it's gonna... pretty much been confirmed. So. Can I can I take a half a second to talk about my thing with Namor? I'm I'm having a renewed uh, interest in Namor. Wait a sec, before you do, I do have one more thing from this episode. Okay. All right, all right. The, the Bob Dylan connection. Yes, yes. Oh, so the, back on that. Okay, so when they're at the um, the cult headquarters, you can hear uh, every grain of sand playing, mm-hmm. and that is from when. Bob Dylan was going through a spiritual awakening and like he was born again. Oh, yeah. um, and, you know, that's kind of what's happening with Haro and Amit and Mark and um, Kanchu. So it's, it, it's, it was just another thing that kind of just lined everything up. It's one of those things that, you know, Marvel plays into um, trying to line everything up and, make us freak out and geek out over the things that are absolutely not relevant, but I still am going to make it relevant because that's who I am. Absolutely. <laughs> and you, you know what else happens too with, with sand? Like if you uh, were to step on a bunch of uh, glass shards uh, or crush them down, that it turns into sand. Well, we heard <laughs> Harlow when he was walking through the neighborhood, we heard the, the crunching of the glass and in, in his mm-hmm. sneakers and stuff. Especially we heard it loud when he, uh, when um, Stephen was let out of the vehicle and fell into the ground by uh, Harlow's feet. You can hear as he was walking around to help him up the glass <laughs> crunching under uh, in his sandals and stuff, which is such a uh, nails on the chalk, chalkboard kind of feeling, but Yep, they're there. So he's punishing himself to prove he's a loyal and worthy, uh, you know, follower for Emmett. So yeah. All right, go ahead with your Namor connection. All right, so Namor connection is going to tie this. Uh, so it's tying a little bit of the Eternals and a little bit of this uh, show we're currently watching, Moon Knight, with uh, Namor. And so here's here's where I get at this. Okay, so obviously Eternals, you know baseline kind of tracks and and uh kind of take place modern day in in london and stuff kind of where moon knight is uh the setting is previously in the first two episodes and stuff our Uh, listeners cannot see my face right now but i'm sitting here very starry-eyed same museum same everything uh, similar museum and everything um i haven't verified if the museum's the same as the one that um that uh, Killmonger went to that's still back the vibranium and the the mask and stuff. I'm I I'm want to say it's not, but it might be the same museum. But it's definitely the same museum that um, that uh, Cersei was working in and stuff. So with that said, um, we all know that at the end of the Eternals, spoiler if you haven't seen it, too, but you should have watched it by now. Um, when they're trying to birth the uh, celestial, but they and they're trying to stop it, and they end up stopping it. It's coming out of the ocean, right? 
maybe that event itself is what's going to spark Atlantis and stuff because maybe that event destroyed a huge part of Atlantis and stuff of that celestial being birthed out and then turned to stone because they stopped the destruction of the planet and stopped uh, stopped that celestial from being born. That's why Namor is so mad in the comics is because exactly humans destroyed Atlantis. That's that, there's this pollution, but yes. that right there would be the uh, would be hundred percent the motivation I would go with if I was introducing Namor because Namor doesn't care about uh, the the nuances like the Eternals aren't humans. He like he doesn't care. You're surface dwellers, and even in the comic books, he didn't care. Like they had to explain like there's Asgardians it's not wasn't us it wasn't the Wakandans it was the Americans it was Namor doesn't care about any of it you're all the same to him if you are not Atlantean exactly you are in your own group so this would totally makes perfect sense why Namor would have a a kill revenge kind of a mentality and not be a total bad guy not be unjustified especially if it's that an anti-hero event, yes and especially if that event is the reason why atlantis got destroyed or you know that brings him out to the surface like he was pretty happy just staying on below but this would bring him out and he's totally justified i get it i would think you guys on the surface needs to pay for what you did so that's and i would i would honestly um think I like that I love that love that because I didn't see him being introduced the way that he was in the comics Mm-mm. like this old grungy guy like yeah, in a right. hostel and you know, like and Reed Richards uh, finds him and yeah. has to throw him in the water because they realize who he is like yep. no my guy needs more than that <laughs> so I, I I love that because he is an anti-hero he's not he's not a villain he's an anti-hero um Correct. so I I love it, and I, I'm an anti-hero with an attitude, and this would be that arrogant attitude that I can see being. I don't played. have to worry about it because I'm an Atlantean princess. I'm a mermaid, in case you didn't know. So he and I are just gonna go like swim off and be happily ever after. It's fine. All right, have have at it. I, I don't think they're the lines that long for that. So he doesn't have a long line. I mean, Bucky has a bigger line than than he does. So I'm just saying. Well, I mean, Bucky also has a robotic arm. That's got a lot. Never mind. I, I think I think Thanos has a bigger line than he does. I mean, I I, I don't know. Maybe not. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> All right, I'm getting I'm getting the discerning looks from. We the, are the, we uh, are done here. <laughs> <laughs> this has been our Marvel Tribe recap of episode two of Moon Knight. We will be back next week to cover episode yes. three, uh, and we will see you next time. Thanks for joining right. us. Peace out, Marvel Tribe.